we're gonna do a long drive contest. Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahol the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing. Uh, today we've got a kind of a unique video, unique challenge between the two of us. We're gonna do a long drive contest. We've got some rules put in in terms of uh, what clubs we're looking for out there. Um, if you have been following the channel, you know that Thomas has been going through the super speed training um, with the super speed uh, over speed training sticks. So um, he's been gaining that club speed, getting up there. Now we're going to kind of put it to the test, I suppose, against me. I mean, I don't know if uh, how that, you know, what the who be the favorite here, I guess. But uh, so kind of to go over those rules a little bit. Um, so we had 10 minutes to go pick out two drivers from the used selection here at Second Swing Minnetonka. So, you know, the, the really the only rule was that 20, 20 year older was the club model. Um, had to be a used club. And of course, we had maybe some different strategies in terms of picking that club. I just went out there, I saw Larry Bobka, one of the you know, most uh, um, renowned club builders, club, uh, no, or knowledgeable club people in the world. So I asked him uh, what I should go for here. And uh, I know Thomas went a little bit of a different route as well and maybe went for an extra length shaft. But Thomas, maybe walk through your, uh, your process here then I'll kind of uh, talk about you know, the clubs that I found. Yeah, one thing I have noticed when I've been doing the super speed training is I've been able to get my club speed up to 116 miles an hour. But because I've been, my attack angle was quite high, I've been hitting the ball very high and spinning. So I tried to reduce the loft. So I tried to find some drivers where I could adjust the loft down. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any drivers with really eight degrees le or less right mm -hmm. now. Um, but I did find a uh, tailor-made RBZ Tour nine that I could reduce the loft down to seven and a half. So it's okay. an older model. The reason I chose this one also is because it's a longer golf shaft. Okay. So the measurement of it's right around about 46.25. Unfortunately, that's the longest shaft that I could find used. <laughs> if I was to build this, and that's probably something we could do probably in future content as well, I would have tried to build something longer and like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I went with that route, and then the same thing, I found a type this TS2, eight and a half. I'm gonna reduce that loft down a little bit with that one as far as can go. Once again, the shaft's 46.25. So okay. those are the two longest shafts that I could find. Unfortunately, our inventory didn't have anything any longer in Minnetonka, but we have to deal with see, that today. I can see there's definitely a difference in approach because as a fitter, you're kind of thinking, all right, here, what are the specs I need to maximize distance? You went for the shaft length, you went for de-lofting the club, things like that. I, I just found Larry <laughs> and I was like, help me out. I got to beat Thomas. And so what he suggested, because I, I did say that, you know, my miss, my miss or maybe my tendency is to hit the ball a little low. And so I have a G410 LST, which is going to be sort of maybe a distance chaser if I do kind of hit the appropriate launch angle. Um, but if I do have that tendency to hit it too low, I have the Maverick Max here. Uh, so that's a really high launching driver. So hopefully if I have that tendency to miss low, this will be the one that corrects that and gives me the right window for height and launch angle. So, and then the shafts, I also have, I think the Pink Tour 65S in the LST, and then the Aldilla Rogue 60S. So I'm going stiff shaft with both of mine right about 60, 65 grams. Yeah, this will be this will be an interesting, interesting test. So guidelines is, we're probably gonna go for absolute longest, so yep. whatever one we can hit the longest today. Maybe also average as well, and see if there's any differences mm -hmm. there. If I'm able to get a shot on here, I'm gonna keep that spin rate down, I might have a chance, but I think pretty good odds that you're gonna take this one. I, we'll see, we'll, so we'll hit five with each driver we have, so a total of 20 tee shots will go into track, man. Uh, I'm excited for this. Uh, I'm gonna be, you know, we're gonna put some sweat into this one too, but. Uh, long drive contest, ultimately the highest driving distance is going to be the winner, but we'll also kind of maybe look at the numbers and see averages and things like that. So, uh, Thomas, you ready to, to do this? Let's do it. All right, Drew, I've got a Titleist Pro V1X Golf Ball, brand okay. new. I just put the silver dot on the ball here. So, brand new ball. Hopefully this is going to give us a little bit more ball speed there as well. It's, uh, when you're hitting, have that silver dot face up. Mm -hmm. All right. And when I was actually warming up with this, I uh, it was in the draw setting, the weight was, so I uh, had to move that back over. So yeah, you I, don't you don't need that draw setting. I don't think I do. If anything, yeah. I need the fade setting. But <laughs> all right, all right. Let's see. That set 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 me a target. <laughs> ah, yeah, you're right. If you get that ball in the air, you uh, we might be in trouble here. Yeah, that uh, dang. 
just not fair that club speed. Yeah, if this was in the draw setting, I might be. I'm not going to give away any more hints here. I need to give myself a chance. <laughs> I think but you've got potential there. I, I think I already know what your hint further. was. Yep. <laughs> Maybe uh, move it to the fade setting. But um, I don't know if that's. We never really made a rule about that, so I think we're just going to go with this. There it is again. It's going to hook left. Was that three shots? Oh my goodness. I just looked at the map. Uh oh. That might be it. Stayed in the air a little longer. 324 is the number right All now. All right. We got one. Yep, you got one in there. All right, you got one good one in there. All right, so <laughs> if we look at the numbers, it looks like. We've got 324.1 is kind of the, the number mm -hmm. there. You got some speed there, 117.5 is pretty impressive. So the reason why you weren't, I'll give you a little hint here. The reason why you weren't quite maximizing kind of your distance is you weren't quite keeping the ball in the air. So we noticed yep. the height was under kind of 100 feet yep. in the air. That one that you really hit well, that one that went quite a bit further, stayed up in the air. It was yep. 123 feet in the air. Spin rate, you know, stayed in that 2,000 mark there as well. So that was, yeah, that does the hard. That's just because you were just drawing the ball. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was like I was. That was what I, you know, mentioned uh, in the, you know, when we started this was my. I was concerned about that kind of low sort of pull hook miss, and that is why my next club is actually Maverick Max, is so I can maybe hit it in the air a little bit more. Now that is a draw bias club too, so that could be a concern for me as well. But I'll maybe work on opening the face a little bit more uh, with my next five shots, but. All right, well, it must be my turn here. So let's move over here and I'll start. All right. With, start with the tightest TS, TS2 that I have set up. The thing you got going for you, though, is you're going to have a lot more, uh, you know, actual chances, right? I had one swing that even had a chance to put up a respectable number there, so. <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, yeah, so the golf shaft I went with is actually pretty light as well. So that's going to make it challenging for me to match that club face up. But I went for the mm -hmm. chance that I could just get one there yeah. where I could get that spin rate down. So this is actually a regular golf shaft. Okay. Ooh, regular so flex golf shaft. probably not the right move. Well, I guess we're not going to. But uh, we'll find out. I wanted to at least see if I can get that swing speed up a little bit. Oh, well, it's a great start, though. You already that, beat my carry distance. Get that spin rate down a little bit. So that's, there's uh, how close in terms of total distance. Ah, I left the face open. Ah, oh, come on. Even still, though, he let, that face was open, but he still me. got really close. Bring this up again. So you're, you're getting really close, and you still have yet to really square that club face. Yeah, I'm not sequencing very well with this, with this golf shaft being light. It's hard for me with this, this regular shaft. It's kind of interesting if you take a look at the dispersion map between us, the two of us. We don't, <laughs> like, we don't like playing golf together, clearly. Yeah, that, this would be just horrendous cart golf. Oh, that might, that might be it. Yes. There's the new right. leader. Got one. I saw the way that came off the, the club face it, into the screen there. It and it just was low enough. Just, yeah. it was dead center. I knew that. And then kept it a little bit low. So All here's right. the, the map. That's the new one to beat, 327. Oh, you Stay jumped down. on that one. A little spin. Man, that's some speed though. Yeah, that was the fastest one so far, 115.4. There's the circles. <laughs> it could not be more opposite. Uh, at least, well, yeah, I guess we have one, two, we got six. Is that six out of ten that are on the golf course? Um, <laughs> so. That, there's, that's, something, that's, there's something to be said yeah, about that. Yeah, I was that. just going to say that. There's, uh, something, there's something, something to be said about, about a more yeah. controlled swing, maybe not going all for, for distance, uh, because these <laughs> maps are a little different than, well, I know this is certainly different than what I'm used to seeing from you. Yeah, uh, I had a hard time, like I said, the light golf shaft yeah. being regular. 
just I couldn't get that with me having a faster tempo. I just couldn't get that club face to kind of square up coming mm -hmm. through. If I did, I had a chance to get that height down. Yeah, and you'd um, be you'd be up yeah. here maybe up here. Yeah, be close. But all right, all right, we got each club left. We'll go. I'll hit my uh, Maverick Max. I got a, I got pressure on me now. Yeah. I'm in trouble. Yep. Mm. Something to be said about not overhooking it. Yeah, overhooking it is killing me, and or did kill me in the. Why did I give you advice? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I can do that again. I think I might be still have a chance on the averages, though. <laughs> Look at that height. That's what you're. That's what you're going for. A little off the toe. Yeah, I don't Ooh. think, yeah, I can't beat that. You had two pretty good shots there. Gear effect helped me there. 119 club speed, wow. That was, that's just the, the luck of the draw in terms of all the numbers getting right there. Under 100 feet, let the thing roll out. It's too bad you have that one miss it in there. You. But, uh, those, those three shots are, you know. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Okay. So it looks like you're talking about that dispersion pattern. Well, <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> it looks like the number to beat total distance three thirty nine point one. Now, I've never hit a driver that far in my life. Unless I can absolutely match up club speed, 116 if I can get if I can get there, keeping that spin rate down, mm -hmm. 2,000 height, it's it's going to be near kind of impossible I, I think. But I'll I'll, I'll give my best. I'll, I'll hopefully I don't hurt myself. Um, but I have a chance at your averages. So no you knows, do because you have that one in there that I've got a chance to at least maybe beat your overall kind of average. That's but I well, would imagine shots were exceptionally good. I would Those imagine really you're good. gonna smoke my averages based on my uh, my the shot that I hit four feet off the ground. But yep. But yeah, I I got kind of with at least two of those. I got the benefit of gear effect where I cut off a little bit of the toe, but that kind of actually decreased the spin, help it fly a little better. So uh, I will say shout out to Larry. I had some doubts about a Maverick Max being in my hand, but um, I think part of that too is seeing me hook it with the L the uh, G410 LST a little bit. I kind of corrected my swing a little bit uh, so yeah what helped, adjustment did you make there I felt I wanted to I kind of was lowering my shoulder a little bit trying to just make sure I was hitting up on the ball first okay. um, which I know is key to getting maximizing driver distance uh, yep. so all right well five shots Thomas all you got <laughs> that is so that is loud, so loud. <laughs> That is a good shot. That's smoked. That thing is extremely loud. That's pretty good overall. <laughs> just too high. I just can't get that height down. I need like a five degree driver with this longer golf shaft. I think that would be the way to go if you're really trying to actually maximize things. You know, find the lowest loft of driver that's relatively modern and mm -hmm. maybe increase that shaft length a little bit. That's the best way to get the absolute max distance, but using what we had here at uh, Minnetonka for me, which was just Larry Bobka. But yeah, there's potential for uh, to build, maybe build ourselves the longest mm -hmm. we can. Yeah. That's just so loud. <laughs> and so spinny. 190 feet in the air. That's that is going to land nice and softly on the green. Keep in mind, this is also set at seven and a half degrees of loft on it too. So, so I wonder if the it's, RBZ, I mean, that's it's RBZ just tour, right? Gotta be, yeah. It's a tour head. So interesting. That thing is launching high for you. Yeah, I can't, I can't get that down. Unless I actually try and like get down on the ball. That might Ooh. be better. Ooh. Come on. Ah, just some extra spin. Ooh. Good ball speed. God. 
Just your the swing. I hit that so well. There. Track man. Oh, I might have just caved the club head in. The top right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. A little bit of a crack there. Well. Uh, oh. So um, we're gonna make a modification to the rules a little bit here. Uh, it would appear either Thomas put a little crack in the RBZ Tour club head, or maybe one was already there. We're still kind of figuring that out. But um, some of the, I mean, it could be part of the reason the spin rates are a little bit higher. Not 100% sure, uh, but I'm gonna give Thomas a few more swings with his original, the TS2 driver, the first one he hit here, uh, just to give him that chance. Because if he's, I mean, if he's using a broken club for club number two, um, I, I kind of, I feel guilty about that. So yeah, maybe, that, maybe hit a couple here, or maybe uh, uh, three more. I'll wait, I'll wait, yeah, give me three more. Kay. That last one clearly did not make sense. I mean, one five, one smash, and then just, yeah, that that high and that, mm -hmm. that spinny there. So let's, let's see if it was the club or if it's... All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. Ooh. Clearly the club. That is a good... Uh, that's pretty good. That's a good ball right there. Yeah. Only way I can get you, what am I, I've got 20 yards, is by about... <laughs> I guess two or three miles down more club speed and somehow get that spin rate to 2,000. I mean, I think that would do it, right? If you were to, uh, if you were to get that club speed in the 116s, get a spin rate in the, you know, under uh, 2,000, you'd certainly have a chance. Well, super speed's definitely helping me here because, you know, I could barely get over 110, 111 yeah. uh, a few months ago. So it's definitely helped, but got to gotta match everything up. Mm -hmm. and then Which is the tough part about swinging, you know, completely out of your yep. shoes. And also, it's probably not the perfect driver for me right. either. That's a lot of ball speed. Stay down spin. Ooh. Look at that club speed. 116. 116. I mean, if that spin is down sub 2,000, you're, you're getting really close. Yeah. So here, we maybe bring up the map to see these last. So this is this one you just hit right here. You had this one too from the previous set of shots that's up there as well. So, I mean, really, if that spin can get to, you know, 1800 maybe, you're going to be getting really close. Mm -hmm. Good ball speed. Ah. Ooh. <laughs> no. That is so close. Oh, man. We got to breathe. Look at. Oh. So close. Wow. You didn't think you had that in you. That I think was, that's, uh, I said that, 2000. That's the farthest yeah, that, you've ever hit the ball, I think, it right? It is the furthest I've ever driven the ball, yeah. Wow. <laughs> With the last swing, just a few yards uh, short. I feel, I mean, the dogs are definitely stacked against me, but uh, I, wow. That was, I'm going to be honest, too. When I got to, like, whatever, what is this? What, that, 339, I, I thought I'd won it. And that was extremely close. That's well done. I mean, wow. So that yeah. clearly, I don't know. I mean, maybe the uh, RBZ, I think you, you, based on this, maybe you are swinging hard enough and hitting the ball hard enough that maybe you did put a little bit of a crack in that thing. I don't know. Because that, that thing, I mean, it sounded really loud, so we maybe thought a little bit different. It, it was could very have been, loud. Yeah, it yeah. could have been maybe it was just an older club, and that's why it was louder. But clearly something was a little bit different mm -hmm. there. Um, I don't know. That's, this was very interesting. And, <laughs> I mean, you hit the farthest drive you've ever hit. So that's, yeah. that's a good takeaway from this, right? That's probably what, that's probably, look, look at those club path and face angle numbers and everything. I mean, that is how you maximize distance right here. Considering, uh, yeah, I'm a little guy, I mean, weigh 165 and 5'9", five, five mm -hmm. I'm pretty happy with that. That's, uh, well, so we can, yeah. if you want to, we can quickly look at some of these averages uh, just to, you know, see. But like the average, clearly, the average king here is, uh, is Thomas here with the TS2, 320 yards on average. There's a lot of shots up there too, because right. I hit more than a little five. more shots. But then yeah. I would say, if you take the spin down at 2,500, if that's down to 2,000 average, you're talking, you know, 330 plus mm -hmm. on average. Um, then I, you know, it looks like my LST was next, even though all of these pretty much are in the, you know, the next hole over on the left. Uh, then your RBZ tour, and then uh, my Maverick Max with the uh, the ball that I carried, I think like 
yeah. 111 yards. If you were going to take that, the, I guess you had that one to the right, and then that this one, one here <laughs> kind of top, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, this one here, right, those, had those three big four feet off the ground. But wow, this well, was, uh, what was. I was only uh, I was four yards behind. Mm -hmm. Getting closer, I guess. You're getting there. That was, I, I got to say, that last swing, you really had to put an ideal swing on it, and you did. And it was, I, I mean, I, really, I, seriously, if there was a way, you had 2,000 spin, drop it at t just a little bit more, you know, to 1,900 or 1,800. That's going to get me. So. More <sighs> super speed training coming up. Touching on, on that, on that tailor made driver, as I mentioned, it's not a bad thing. It happens occasionally. Mm -hmm. this, this model, for sure, is an older model. So yeah. whether it's a combination of that, whether I did it, whether it was already cracked, I, I don't know. But if your driver does crack, it would be covered under a warrant, warranty. Yeah. I think especially if it's within, I think it's two years, it depends on the, kind of the manufacturer. Uh, and we do cover that warranty in, in store. So if you have a driver that, that's cracked, we can help the customer out to mm -hmm. take care and get that, that warranty kind of taken care of and, and work with the manufacturer there too. But um, yeah. Uh, I guess I either cracked the driver or it was already cracked. That's distance. And the, here, again, the, the story is the dispersion is just so wide that um, <laughs> it's just th the right thing to do is to not swing completely yeah. as hard as you can um, in terms of playing good golf. But if you're really trying to chase distance, maybe you learn a couple of things from this video. Yeah, it really depends on the golf course you're playing at. If the course is holes wide open, you probably can swing a little harder. But if it's a tight fairway, accuracy. Mm -hmm usually always wins. Oh yeah. Well, golfers, thank you for watching this. Um, I think this was a pretty fun one for us. Tom would say this farthest drive ever. That's definitely probably the farthest I've ever hit a ball too, in terms of measured distance. But um, uh, please subscribe to our channel. We got a lot of uh, fun videos. A lot of them are going to be the club reviews and stuff, but once in a while we'll sprinkle something in, uh, like this in there as well. And hopefully, again, maybe you learned something about maybe maximizing distance or maybe why not to go all out in distance because of some of the drives that in particular that I hit today. So. Thank you guys for watching and uh, thank you again as well for following the channel.